Hello and welcome back to the next part in my Synology software overview series of guides. Today I want to talk about the best ways in which you can enjoy watching videos on your Synology NAS. Now there are loads of different ways to do it and it's worth highlighting that the ways I'm going to talk about today are more app based but most of these indeed I would say 90% of the applications I talk about in my videos all have applications readily available to be installed on top of um, digital set-top boxes as well as Amazon Fire Stick, mobile devices and indeed client devices too. So what I'm showing you today is the user interface of using a web browser but it's worth highlighting that you can install applications for your device if it's iOS, Android, Windows or more, chances are there is an app for that. Now there are loads of ways in which you can go through your video files on a NAS. I'm not going to go through every one of them, I'm just going to go through the most important ones. So for example, if you go to all of the packages, you could, in theory, use FileStation. You can use FileStation to, you know, look at a video file and open it up. Same goes for Moments. You can view some video files in Moments. Same goes for if you want to utilize Drive. There's loads of apps that have a percentage or an element of video playback built into them. But the ones that we want to talk about are the ones where they are optimal. They're the ones that should be strongly recommended to enjoy video media on your NAS. Now, the majority of this access comes down into two main categories, local and external. Local being via your network, so over something called DLNA, uh, Digital Living Network Alliance. These are devices that can pick up a device, a storage device like this, over the network, or in other words, all the devices in an area of home or office that share the same internet. I know that's incredibly caveman, but that's the best way to describe it. And can facilitate and interact with it. Now, if that sounds like something that best suits your needs, you want to use your smart TV or your devices to just view stuff on its proprietary platform, its own media manager, maybe a console or something like that, where you want to use their first party software, then the one you're going to be looking for is Media Server, this tool here. This creates an area of multimedia accessible storage on your NAS that can be accessed over DLNA or the more simplistic UPnP. You have a certain amount of control and I say it's an app, it's not really an app, it's more of a feature that you can install, it's available on the package center, you just find it on all these packages and install it. And once you've got it installed, it looks a little like this. Let's get rid of file station there. So as you can see here, these are the general settings. You suggest where they will go with the default network setting on your device, whichever one you're utilizing, but you can preset it to be a certain port on your device. You can even change a lot of the security protocol and the menu options from your end. But it's worth highlighting that generally you will only see the user interface of your client connected device and their own graphical user interface, bear that in mind. On top of that, you can change numbers of settings, how you want things displayed in certain file types, whether you want images to be shared as well for thumbnail and graphic images. If the client uh, connected device, like again, your smart TV or a Android streaming box can see it. But you've also got a bunch of other options there as well, where the NAS will interact with both the data inside and online services and give the client connected device access via DLNA. And then of course, you've got the additional support and additional confirmation to support different file codecs, either because these require an additional bit of confirmation for you because of licensing, or just simply that you may want to eliminate or make sure to include certain file formats. You can even control devices on the local area network that are DLNA supported and, can, and accessible and choose whether you want them to have any kind of access and what that device is. So you can change how much or how little some devices can see. So it's quite useful that way. But if you're buying a modern NAS in 2020, this is not the best way to enjoy your media. And the best two ways to enjoy your media are Video Station and Plex. Now, you've probably heard of Plex Media Server. So what we'll do is we'll do Plex Media Server first because you've probably heard of it. Now, Plex Media Server, if you go to the Package Center, is an app that's completely available to download here on the desktop 
um, and you download it there, it's nice and straightforward, but it's also worth highlighting that the version of Plex generally available on the app center of your Synology NAS will not be the very, very newest version. And as soon as you set up a Plex Media Server NAS, it will ask you to create a login with it. It's very straightforward, and I have done a whole video on this very NAS on how to set up a Plex Media Server, so do check that out. Plex Media Server is kind of um, the, the more slick user interface that a number of you may be used to. It comes in a free version and a paid version. It has access to lots of online streaming platforms, uh, online music streaming, and more. There's lots of stuff you can do, and you can connect to other services too. The subscription service allows you to take advantage of things like transcoding, and transcoding being the reshaping and raw reformatting of your media files over the network and therefore more configurable to your client device. Say you're utilizing an internet connected mobile phone, but you're on a metered connection or a weak connection. What you want is a smaller version of your files. What you can do with Plex Media Server is have your file changed in on the system before it's sent to you to be a smaller, lighter, more configured, more configured file that's more in keeping with your client connected device. Maybe it's a smaller resolution, maybe it's a certain codec that your device supports where it can't uh, support the original codec. There's lots of options. Now, chucking files on here is incredibly straightforward. Once you've got a Plex account set up and logged in, it will invite you to choose files uh, folders on your NAS. And again, I do recommend you check out my Plex setup video for that. But once you've pointed Plex at the certain files and folders on your NAS, you can tell it where your media lives. In my case, I've got certain folders that are dedicated to different kinds of media. I merely point Plex at each of those individual files and folders and it will play them. A little tip for those out there first time using Plex that have noticed sometimes that when you're assigning folders on Plex and it's not seeing certain folders, then I strongly recommend heading to the control panel, going to users, and from user, find a new user that's created called Plex. Once you set up Plex with your NAS, the Plex account is created. And from here, you will need to make sure that Plex account has access to your folders. Make sure it can access certain files and folders on your NAS. And when it can, it can then scan all of those folders, including subdirectories. So just make sure, because sometimes you won't see all of your folders on NAS. Talking of folders, what you may see once you upload files to your NAS is that certain media files will have something called metadata scraping. Metadata scraping is when Plex scours the internet as well as utilizing online sources like IMDB and Rotten Tomatoes and gets information such as trailers, it will get information with background description of episodes and more. And this is extended to more than just TV episodes. It will break everything down to seasons, to episodes, and all the while give you lots of information as well as file codecs and more. If you go into movies, it can be a bit touch and go. Depending on the file formats you've got, you may need to rename some of your files, although Plex has improved vastly over the years and can generally find most information about files. Although often you will find with regards to thumbnails, it may hit the mark sometimes. Say here, for example, it's managed to find lots of people that were in the cast. It also has trailers. And it has lots of revisits and modern content too, based on some of those online platforms. There's even, even information about descriptions. And at the top here, we have reviews from Rotten Tomatoes. And um, I can't remember which that one is. It's Popcorn something. On top of that, you've got more information up here. And even when you play a file, you can change the playback of a file very easily. Now, I'm using OBS screen recording software. So if I try to play this file, chances are it will look quite choppy for here. I'm going to mute that file because we don't want copyright infringement on YouTube. But as you can see, it's probably quite choppy for you watching this because of the screen recording software. But you can flick through quite easily. You can pause it. You can go to the bottom. You can change file formats, reduce or increase the size of the file to make it play back nice and easy. There's lots of options available to you. And that's extended. You can even monitor photos within Plex too. We can look at your photo collections and it can get lots of real-time information about them. Take, for example, this picture of Ron, the cat that's always on this YouTube channel. You've got lots of information there. You can find out more about the camera. You can find out more about what it was taken with and more about locations. 
So there's lots of information available to you utilizing Plex. And again, I'm always been I've always been someone that has championed Plex. And if you are someone who's looking to enjoy your media on a wide variety of devices, there are very few programs out there that are better than Plex in terms of just the sheer depth of devices that are supported of your media, um, of photos, music, and video all in one. You can even, there's an app available for Android, iOS, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, desktop PC, Mac, smart TV. The list really is endless. But the reason I've done Plex second and not last is because of Video Station. Now, Video Station is the application from Synology. It is their own video playing app that, ch that tries to rival Plex and in many regards wins. This has scanned the exact same media as Plex. But what you may have noticed already is where, or if we look at the tab for the matrix here, this is the matrix on Plex and this is the tab for the matrix if we go back into it we go to movies we select the matrix we can see here a little bit more information about the description we've got more about the rating that's not a score i've given it and you can find out more information about it just by clicking through the tabs there's even more information about it currently available up here as well as offline transcoding too something that is technically not supported in plex on nas now the configurations within here are more centered just towards photo media. With Plex supporting music and photos, Synology already has applications in the bank for enjoying photos and music media. So if you're focusing on just video formats, chances are this will be appealing. Also, not only has it garnered more in terms of the photos and the metadata that it scraped in the background, and remember all of this metadata has been acquired by the NAS in conjunction with its online sources. If we have a look, we can see a lot of information there about background, where information is garnered from, and where uh, the metadata is scraped from. But on the case of the Synology application, we can see that not only did it get certain images, it found a movie that for some reason Plex didn't. If we go to the movies, we can see clearly that Hateful Eight is on this NAS. If we go to the NAS, we can go to File Station, we can go into Video, we can go into Movies, and there is the Hateful Eight. There is our video file. But for some reason, Plex didn't identify it. Even though it has full administration uh, admin, admin, ah, admin access to that folder, it wasn't visible on Plex, but it is on Video Station. And this has happened several times before. And I do keep looking into this, and I do have a comparison coming very, very soon for Video Station versus Plex. Now, the options for configuration are quite dense. Uh, for both Plex and video station there are loads of ways in which you can configure your platform it is worth highlighting of course that a plex media server account does require payment if you want to take advantage of the transcoding engine and the add-ons there's a monthly fee whereas synology does not have that monthly fee it's included with the cost of your nas one-off payment never pay again and again lots of ways in which you can configure it to your needs so there's lots of things you can be doing with multimedia on your NAS, whether you're taking advantage of Plex Media Server or Video Station. So let's have a look. Let's load up the matrix there again. We'll have a look at some of those options. Carry on there. And playback is near enough identical. And we will mute that file right there. Hopefully um, it is playing at least a bit, although there's probably lots of choppy screen recording here for you but that's more because of the gpu recording software that we're utilizing today known as obs now again you can configure the options it's not as technical as plex media server you can just ask it to downgrade it to say medium and it will downgrade the video quality on the fly so you're watching a lower res version of that video file as you can see there remute it there Lots of options, lots of stuff you can do. It is still a great application and rivals Plex in a number of ways. But this has been how uh, what are the best ways to enjoy video media on your NAS. There are other applications, there are loads of ways to enjoy your media. I just happen to think these are the best ways to enjoy videos on your NAS. They're very easy to set up. They are one-click installs and all of them just require you to add 
a directory. In the case of video, for example, we can sit there and go, right, I want to add a new menu, wallet, add a new menu, I want to do a new others folder. This, uh, we're going to go for OK. We're going to go for a different file type. Go for that, assign permissions. It's really that straightforward to add new directories. And we can add more at any time. You can add a new folder, go into your NAS, find a folder that you've not used, say surveillance, in case you're doing surveillance recordings. Then you can add that folder directly to your NAS here on the side, and it will add that new directory to movie. You can add brand new directories. You can do more and more as you go. Loads of options, lots of choice. And of course, Plex will always be there for you, completely for free if you choose, or you can go for the paid for subscription. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you want to learn more, and I'll see you on the next video.